on World News Tonight. Typhoon terrors. Philippines down in the aftermath as the death toll continues to mount. Political pressure. Boris Johnson faces yet another hurdle as an unfavorable step down causes revolt. Fighting Omicron. China on the cusp of discovery with a brand new drug promising more protection. Spirit of Christmas. Santa's little helpers take a wholesome approach by bringing happiness to the ones that need it the most. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with the updates on Typhoon Rai. In the aftermath of the strongest typhoon to hit the Philippines this year, more than 200 deaths have been confirmed, while more reports are still coming in. Efforts are being ramped up to deliver water and food to the devastated island to offset the tragic circumstances. Dozens dead and still many missing. The strongest typhoon to hit the Philippines this year has taken its toll. The number of confirmed deaths has risen this Sunday as many casualties were announced on the island of Bohol, a tourist hotspot. This could be set to increase over the coming days, with many communications still cut. The typhoon swept through the south and the centre of the country with winds of up to 195 kilometres per hour. More than 300,000 people were forced to flee their homes like here on the island of Mindanao. The Philippines is hit by an average of 20 storms and typhoons every year, but locals were left unprepared for the sustained power of Typhoon Rai. The ferocity of the storm has been linked to global warming, with the Philippines being ranked among the globe's most vulnerable nations to the impacts of climate change. As rescue operations get underway, Thousands of military, police, coast guard and fire personnel are being deployed to assist in search and rescue efforts in the worst affected areas of the region. Early estimates place repair costs at more than 350 million euro. Moving on to the updates of the COVID pandemic, health officials urge Americans to get booster shots, wear masks and be careful if they travel over the holidays, with the Omicron variant racing and likely to take over as the dominant strain in the United States. With the Omicron variant of COVID-19 raging across the world, U.S. health officials are urging Americans to use caution over the holidays. National Institutes of Health Director Dr. Francis Collins told CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday the new variant is different enough that it could potentially evade vaccines and other precautions. Omicron has been found in 43 U.S. states and around 90 countries so far since it was first identified in Southern Africa and Hong Kong in late November. In the U.S., cases and deaths have risen about 50 percent since the start of the month, according to a Reuters tally. Many sports games have been rescheduled and live shows canceled, with officials fearing holiday travel and gatherings could fuel Omicron's spread. President Joe Biden plans to give a speech on Tuesday about the fast-spreading variant, hammering home his message of increased vaccinations and testing. Countries around the world continue to grapple with the rapid spread of the COVID-19, especially the Omicron variant. Italy has reported its highest number of new daily COVID-19 patients in over a year, while Russia is seeing over 1,000 new COVID-19 related fatalities a day. Italy has recorded a sharp rise in new COVID-19 infections with only a week until Christmas, prompting major cities to cancel festivities. On Friday, the country logged over 28,000 new cases, Italy's highest daily tally since November last year. Local media also say this is the highest number since the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines. Against such a backdrop, Italian health authorities are urging the public to get a third booster dose, saying they need to be, quote, responsible over the busy Christmas period. Russia is struggling with a sharp uptick in the number of COVID-19-related deaths. The Kremlin said Sunday that President Vladimir Putin is deeply concerned about Russia's COVID-19 mortality rates as over 1,000 people are dying every day. With the rapid spread of Omicron, Germany's health minister has underscored the importance of booster shots. He also expressed concern the variant could soon unleash a massive fifth wave. This comes as a new expert council of the German government called for tougher restrictions to slow the spread of the new strain, explaining Omicron has brought a new dimension to the pandemic. 
Experts say Omicron cases are doubling across the country every two to four days, faster than any previous variant. Turkey will send 15 million COVID-19 vaccine doses to Africa, President Tayyip Erdogan announced at the major summit of the continent's leaders, adding that the low vaccination rates there were a blot of humanity. Deepening ties with the African continent in all areas, Turkey invited 16 heads of African states and over 100 ministers to Istanbul for a two-day summit in the third meeting of its kind. In the past 20 years, trade between Turkey and Africa has seen a six-fold increase, reaching more than $30 billion in 2021. Hoping to expand Turkey's influence even more, President Erdogan has promised to ship 15 million vaccine doses to Africa. Turkey is developing its own vaccine, Turkovac, which is in the process of receiving emergency use approval a green light which African countries are waiting for impatiently. The number of new infections on the continent has shot up by 57% in the past week. South Africa is the hardest hit country, becoming one of the first in the world affected by the new Omicron variant, which is believed to be even more contagious than past coronavirus strains. At the current rate, the World Health Organization has warned it could take Africa until May 2022 to vaccinate 40% of its population. We have some good news for you. China's first anti-COVID-19 drugs, two monoclonal antibody medicines used for a combination therapy, were granted emergency approval by the China's National Medical Products Administration. The two medicines are used in combination to treat adult and adolescent patients with mild and moderate symptoms with severe risk factors for progression. Specifically, the medicines are conditionally approved for adolescents. The function of the protein is to open a lock on the cell because the virus must get inside the cell to replicate itself to reproduce progeny. The antibody basically blocks the surface to take effect. It's a way of group fighting. The cellular entry of the COVID-19 virus is deepened on the binding of the virus spike protein to cell the receptor. The approved neutralizing monoclonal antibody blocks the virus at this stage. The Third People's Hospital of Xinjiang and Brill Bioscience have jointly developed the cocktail therapy of monoclonal antibody, which are derived from antibodies isolated from people who have recovered from COVID-19. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back. Muslim nations resolved to work with the United Nations to try to unlock hundreds of millions of dollars in frozen Afghan assets in a bid to address a growing humanitarian crisis. Envoys from 57 Islamic nations and observer delegations met Sunday in Islamabad for the biggest summit on Afghanistan since Kabul fell to the Taliban in August, pledging to establish a trust fund to help prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. After the Taliban's return to power, the international community froze billions of dollars in aid, plunging 38 million people into their worst hunger crisis ever. The bloc's delegates will now coordinate how to channel aid to the economy without financing the Islamist group, whose government has not yet been internationally recognized. And Pakistan's leader has urged the U.S. to separate the suffering people from the Taliban. And I speak to uh, the United States specifically. They must de-link the Taliban government from the 40 million Afghan citizens. Even if they have uh, they've been in conflict with Taliban for 40 years, uh, 20 years. The United Nations has warned that Afghanistan is teetering on the edge of the world's worst humanitarian disaster. Combined with the coronavirus pandemic, severe drought and many jobless since the Taliban takeover, an estimated 98% of Afghans don't have enough access to food. Former Brexit negotiator David Frost resigned from the government with immediate effect, topping a torrid week for British Prime Minister Boris Johnson after a party rebellion on new coronavirus curbs and by election humiliation. British Brexit Minister David Frost resigned on Saturday over disillusionment with the direction of Boris Johnson's government. It deals a major blow to the embattled Prime Minister, 
The resignation of Frost, an architect of Johnson's Brexit strategy, raised questions about the future tone of the EU divorce. Frost said he was confident that Brexit was secure, but said he had concerns about the government's direction. You know my concerns about the current direction of travel, Frost told Johnson in a letter released by Downing Street. He added that Britain needs a, quote, lightly regulated, low-tax, entrepreneurial economy. His resignation was first reported by the Mail on Sunday, which said it was triggered by Johnson's tougher COVID restrictions and a broader discontent with tax rises and the cost of environmental policies. Frost said he'd agreed with Johnson earlier this month to leave in January, but because his move had been leaked, it should happen with immediate effect. We also need to learn to live with COVID, Frost said. I hope we can get back on track soon and not be tempted by the kind of coercive measures we've seen elsewhere. The departure of British government's most senior Brexit negotiator comes on top of warnings from some of his own Conservative Party lawmakers that he must improve his leadership or face a challenge. Johnson's under pressure over a series of scandals, including a video which emerged showing his staff laughing and joking about a Downing Street party during a 2020 Christmas lockdown when such festivities were banned. Negotiations break down regarding President Biden's Build Back Better package and Senator Joe Manchin's decision to vote no on this $2 trillion bill face severe criticism from the White House. Tonight, a potentially fatal blow to President Biden's massive social spending and climate plan. This is a no. Senator Joe Manchin, a Democratic holdout for months over the size and scope of the package, closing the door on the $1.7 trillion bill in its current form. I cannot vote to continue with this piece of legislation. I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. The White House firing back in a lengthy, blistering statement. Writing Manchin's comments are, quote, at odds with his conversations with the president this week, where he pledged to keep negotiations going. If his comments indicate an end to that effort, they represent a sudden and inexplicable reversal in his position and a breach of his commitments to the president. The proposal, which Democrats had hoped to pass this year but ultimately punted to 2022, includes $555 billion to combat climate change, as well as funding for child care, elder care, and health care. Just days ago, the president was optimistic Manchin would come around, saying, we will bridge our differences and advance the Build Back Better plan. But soaring inflation put Manchin support further in doubt, leaving progressives livid Sunday. If he doesn't have the courage to do the right thing for the working families of West Virginia and America, let him vote no in front of the whole world. Hong Kongers snubbed a legislature poll taking place under new Patriots only rule imposed by China with the lowest turnout since residents here started electing lawmakers three decades ago. Giant banners all over Hong Kong, urging residents to vote in an election designed strictly for Chinese patriots. But despite the publicity blitz, only 30% of the electorate voted. That's the lowest level since the city's 1997 handover to China. The elections are the first to be held since Beijing overhauled Hong Kong's electoral system earlier this year. The reforms allow China to vet every candidate and drastically limit the number of directly elected seats in the Legislative Council. Four and a half million residents were eligible to vote, but their ballots will only decide 20 seats out of 90. The rest will be handpicked by pro-Beijing committees. Leaders in Hong Kong have defended the changes, saying they were needed to ensure stability. But critics, many of whom have been jailed or gone into exile, say the reforms have weakened democracy in the city. In the lead-up to the election, at least 10 people were arrested for inciting others to cast a blank ballot. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. 
A powerful gas explosion in a sewage system in Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, killed at least 12 people and injured 11 others. The blast was apparently caused by the ignition of gas accumulated in a sewer beneath the HBL Bank building. Chilean leftist Gabriel Boric won the country's presidential runoff election as far-right rival Jose Antonio conceded defeat with results showing a nearly 10-point gap between the deeply polarized candidates. Eyewitness video showed residents of a township in southwestern Malaysia evacuating from their flood-hit homes as mass flooding caused by heavy rain has already displayed more than 21,000 people across the country. The Japanese foreign minister has said Tokyo will take China's human rights issues into account when deciding whether to join the diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Olympics. Countries including the United States, the UK, Canada and Australia have already announced a diplomatic boycott of the Games. Thailand is considering reinstating mandatory quarantine for foreign visitors due to concerns over the spread of Omicron, as the health ministry reported the country's first case of the local transmission of the coronavirus variant. Spider-Man No Way Home set a pandemic record in reaching 253 million US dollars and set a Canadian ticket sales in its opening weekend and ranked as the third biggest domestic debut in Hollywood history. Spider-Man No Way Home racked up a head-spinning 253 million dollars in North American ticket sales over the weekend, setting a pandemic record and ranking as the third biggest US film debut in Hollywood history. Fans packed auditoriums for No Way Home, a big-budget superhero spectacle that is playing only in theaters, delivering a much-needed jolt to movie theater chains even as the fast-spreading Omicron variant threatened to keep people home. U.S. and Canadian ticket sales crushed the most optimistic projections from last week when analysts deemed $200 million a long shot. The movie stars Tom Holland as Marvel's web-slinging superhero and Zendaya as his girlfriend, MJ. It also brings back stars of previous Superman films. Hello, Peter. The movie's success underscores the continuing pull of superhero-based films at cinemas when other genres have struggled. Steven Spielberg's remake of classic musical West Side Story, for instance, which has earned rave reviews and Oscar buzz, sold just $3.4 million worth of tickets in the U.S. and Canada over the weekend. Its global total stands at just over $27 million after two weekends in theaters. According to estimates from distributor Sony, the opening weekend take for Spider-Man No Way Home stands at a hefty $587 million worldwide. And finally tonight, Courtney Lofton has helped others during the holidays for over a decade, but started the Red Sled Santa Foundation nearly two years ago. The nonprofit creates a meaningful Christmas by providing gifts and financial assistance to families in need. Who likes to draw pictures? While the elves are busy at the North Pole. Well, follow me in. <laughs> this Santa, Courtney Lofton, is busy at his North Ridge workshop in Southern California. I had, I had to grow the beard. I just felt that was probably the first sign of the calling. <laughs> oh, lots of happy faces here. A professional contractor on the side, he's been helping others during the holidays for more than a decade. Isn't that fun? Yes. But officially started the Red Sled Santa Foundation almost two years ago. This is the tea building I made. The nonprofit aims to create a meaningful Christmas by providing gifts and financial assistance to families in need. And if I can bring just a little sparkle of love and happiness and keep the magic of Christmas alive, uh, I'm going to keep doing it. This year, he opened his workshop to the community, a chance for others to help too. Well, hello! Inviting groups like the Young Adult Club from the Inland Valley Down Syndrome Association. You're all in junior elf training today. Showing volunteers how to make toys. Very good. Now let's tie a knot. Giving them a sense of purpose and pride. Perfect. For teaching a child to make something from their own hands, from their own heart, and that makes it even more special. This is the fun part. Are you ready? Yeah. For elves like Brooke Beard, the opportunity to make and help give out these gifts is a joy. I couldn't wait to, for this day to come. Wow, you've got some good stuff in here, too. A special day for their parents, too. So? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. 
had a very shiny nose. So far, the Red Sled Santa Foundation has donated nearly 7,000 toys. All kinds of fun stuff. This group also offering a donation, helping Santa make smiles for many more. This is a, um, a donation from our group for Whoa. you, so you can go help some more children. Oh, this is so wonderful. Sharing the true meaning of Christmas. Santa doesn't come down from the chimney. He comes from the heart. All year long. Now, your official Santa's helpers. <laughs> In case you have missed any of the stories we add tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Anuradhi will be back tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.